Okay. So, a uh, few more discussions about abilities of the Falcon. So, let's recap. Falcon is able to make automatic acquisitions. Is able to build up a TF map, applying this cluster separation, and then this is absolutely extremely important. We, um, it's important to track only persistent phenomena, and only about this kind of persistent phenomena uh, perform an alarm evalu evaluation. Why is important to track only persistent phenomena? Um, because if you do a real field measurement, it's very frequent that for many reasons you perform a, a measurement today and you see a, some partial discharge uh, activity. You repeat the um, the measurement a few days later and you see probably a totally different uh, pattern. This means that uh, the acquisition can change day by day, but only the signals that belongs to real defect are always present because the defect, uh, if it's present, cannot disappear. So it's, for this reason, it's important to track only persistent phenomena. Because if you do that, you are uh, taking care about only the defects, the, the signals that come from the defects. We recommend four acquisitions per day. For example, one at midnight, one at midday, and uh, one in the middle of the morning, and one in the middle of the afternoon, in order to cover the all conditions. Because at midnight, you are taking acquisitions in a, in a condition of the minimum of the load current. At the midday, let's assume that is the uh, maximum load uh, current and two other points in the middle between these two conditions. So four acquisitions per day is what we recommend. Um, so um, there are three ranges so we, remember that we are measuring signals electrical signals that has an amplitude in volts so it's important to choose the right full scale in order to uh, do not miss uh, some signal because if you have signals in the range of two volts and you choose the range of one volt then you are losing something so this range is automatically selected so falcon is in is an auto range device when we comes uh, to the voltage selection and also a trigger level is automatic so if you if you think to an oscilloscope how you use an oscilloscope uh, you have to set a threshold so if the if the signal is higher than that threshold then you acquire the signal so this is something that a skilled operator must decide by himself, but you need, you need experience. You need experience uh, in order to do that. Uh, but I repeat once again, because this is extremely important, all these decisions are taken automatically. This guarantee always the best quality of the acquisition. Oh, now, you should be familiar with this. So uh, we repeat once again, there is a, a TF map. Now we know what does it mean. Now we know also what does it mean, the word cluster. Every cluster belongs to different phenomena. Falcon is able to identif identify the different phenomena by identifying different cluster in the TF map and then track independently different phenomena. So this slide uh, highlights once again how it's important to track only persistent phenomena because persistent phenomena uh, belongs to existing defect. So um, 
I have also to, uh, to say that sporadic events are not shown at all. So uh, the user, if wants to perform a post analysis, will not see this kind of signal because they're absolutely not important. So uh, the operator during the post analysis will take care about only uh, signals that belongs to defects. This is a representation of the concept. So in the TF map can appear and disappear uh, some, some clusters, then some clusters that um, appear and disappear. So only persistent will uh, be uh, used to arise an alarm. Okay, so uh, once again, these slides repeat the concepts that we already discussed. So I will not go into uh, repeat once again this important uh, concept, but you can download this presentation from the hands out section. So uh, even if you lost uh, some concepts, uh, you can read it in a second time. When we come to the graphs, uh, once again we repeat, um, if a phenomenon has a stable amplitude over the time, uh, means that this defect, or uh, let's say defect, is uh, uh, not going worse and worse. Because if the defect uh, is becoming a uh, uh, more and more dangerous, also the amplitude of the signals that are produced by the defect, uh, the amplitude is increasing. So if the amplitude increase is an indication that the uh, defect will evolve in a real fault. Uh, if the question is, uh, but how much in advance you can uh, let's say predict that a defect becomes a fault. The typical time is in order, in the range of some weeks, few weeks, or few days. What is important to, to know is that we are not talking about hours. Uh, we can see a defect, uh, the evolution of, of a defect, let's say in the range of two, three, four weeks before. This is a real case. This is a real case. Uh, we can see from this graph that there are two lines because there are there there was uh, measured uh, two different phenomena. So uh, this installation uh, was from uh, it, it was in the 2018 for more or less uh, one year. But this uh, representation is only from the 2nd of September to the 24th of October. So the day one in this graph is the 2nd of September. So you see in this uh, representation that the amplitude of this phenomena is extremely stable, so it's not increasing. But uh, in day 4 of October, a new phenomena has been detected. And this phenomena was also persistent. So this is a clear indication that this signal comes from a defect. If we uh, analyze the uh, pattern, we see this is uh, the TF map. This cluster belongs to this blue phenomena. But on day uh, 4 of October, we start to see in the TF map a new phenomenon. But it's uh, important that you see that looking to the uh, traditional phase resolved PD pattern, this acquired on day 4 of October is practically identical 
of all the other patterns measured before. So look, this is uh, identical to this. So look, uh, performing the analysis looking only to this is impossible to see that something is going on because only TF map is highlighting a new phenomena and you can see here. If you click on the cluster, automatically Falcon is uh, showing you only the dots that belongs to this cluster. So by clicking on this blue cluster, you see this pattern and clicking on the green, then you see uh, this. So there is a phenomena that happened uh, in corresponding of, of this uh, zero crossing, let's say, so is a clear indication of a defect. Look, the first, the first uh, identification was on day four, and on day 17, this defect uh, became a fault. So you see this, uh, this connection here, because uh, after the fault, the cable was uh, out of service, of course. So um, the customer uh, did the localization of the fault, understood that it was more or less at two kilometers far from the Falcon, from the measuring point. They did the repairing and then uh, they energized, so they put back in service the cable and uh, has been observed that uh, the phenomena that was present even before the fault uh, was present even after as a confirmation that this is not, this was not a, a, something dangerous, but the, um, the signals that came from the fault after the repairing was not present anymore. So this is a clear indication uh, about how powerful is a monitoring system like this. So, and this give you uh, a confirmation about how much in advance a defect can be identified uh, before it becomes a fault. Okay, let's discuss about a few conclusions. So if, if a monitoring system, online monitoring system is uh, used, uh, these are the benefits. So it's possible to identify defects before that they become a fault. So uh, the, the, the operator can take the proper action in order to avoid the, the disservice. Um, another uh, uh, interesting point is that you can also extend the asset life cycle. Why? Because not necessarily an old cable is a cable that must be replaced. So, um, I mean, um, without a system like this, you can believe that it's time <clears throat> to change <clears throat> to change uh, a specific cable only because it is old in order to prevent that it become faulty. Uh, maybe this is not true because it's just old, but is perfectly working. And by applying a monitoring system, this is something that you can realize. Um, so you can also uh, optimize the maintenance plan because the number of people involved in the maintenance is not infinite. Uh, so in, sometimes the, the people are not, uh, not a lot. So it's better that the time of these important guys is well, uh, well managed. So it's very important that they take care only about the cables with real defects. Uh, the Falcon provides you the possibility to uh, perform a high quality analysis, high quality monitoring uh, without skills when we come to, for, to the partial discharge analysis. So, it's not necessary to have a specific skills. 
uh, you don't need to be expert in the analysis of the data and then uh, the false positive, when we say false positive is false alarms, uh, is avoided because first of all what is noise is already not considered by the Falcon and uh, watching to the trend, uh, to the trend of uh, the phenomena that are identified is also possible to decide if the defect is in evolution or not. And we know that if a defect is in evolution, is always in evolution towards a fault. It is extremely easy to install. It is uh, fully automatic. You just switch on and it start to do its job automatically. And also, you don't need to be trained for the uh, installation. If you remember, it is extremely easy. Uh, just two sensors place the Falcon uh, through magnets or uh, through a DIN guide, connect uh, the RJ45 cable for an internet connect or, uh, connection if you wish, and that's it. When there is a fault, um, some costs must be paid. Uh, only because a fault happens. So if there is a fault, then you have to localize it, you have to dig, repair the failure, and then you have also to repair the uh, surface, the road surface. Then you have to pay for the material that you use for the repairing. Uh, some maneuvers are necessary in order to, uh, like for example, the operator must go to the substation, open uh, one circuit breaker, close another circuit breaker, so all the maneuver operations that must be implemented in order to uh, give back the service to the users. But the much more important aspect is that whenever there is a fault, the distribution, distribution system operator pay some penalties to the energy authority. So it's extremely important for a, a distribution system operator uh, to find a way to uh, predict that a defect will be, be uh, to see a defect be, be, before it become a fault in order to avoid to pay penalties. So this is extremely important. So that's why the monitoring system is something very interesting for this kind of people because act directly on the reducing of the payment of penalties. So, thanks to a monitoring system, uh, these are conclusions, so this is a recap of uh, uh, the whole discussion uh, that we did uh, during this webinar. So, um, the possibility to identify a defect before, before it becomes a fault reduces a lot uh, the cost, the overall cost. You can decide what cable must be uh, replaced and not uh, not uh, replaced so this helps uh, to uh, do the right investment so you, you can decide how much money you need for uh, the replacement of uh, the cables and uh, so th this means that you can also save money so you will spend money for the repla re replacement of the cable that must be replaced not only because they are old. So uh, increasing, uh, uh, re sorry, reducing the number of faults uh, also in, that means uh, reducing the number of uh, out of service, increase the customer satisfaction of the distribution system operator. And in the end, as I said before, this is extremely important, you are going to reduce the, uh, the money that you pay uh, for the penalties. Having discussed about uh, this system, maybe you are interested uh, to try to you to, if you if you never had this kind of experience in your network, if you want to make a pilot project, uh, in this slide, we are going to describe the four main steps 
that we really recommend uh, for the implementation of a pilot project. That's why it's called the pilot project roadmap. First of all, must be identified a critical area where the frequency of the falls uh, is higher. Then it's important to do a pre-screening uh, of the cables so we can come with our partial discharge portable device. Um, we see what are the cables with uh, already some partial discharge activities. This is important because a pilot project typically starts with a few numbers of uh, uh, cable under the monitoring system. Uh, so ma uh, this uh, step is here in order to increase the probability to uh, place the Falcon on a cable that uh, in the end, uh, for the, that first of all has something to see, not just noise. And if there is a partial discharge activity, there is, say, higher probability that this become a real fault. So this um, is a clear, gives the clear evidence that uh, the monitoring system is actually uh, working as you, uh, you would like. After uh, the cables to be monitored are identified, then we can place the Falcon and then perform a weekly reading by remote. Um, typically, during a pilot project, uh, Falcon are not integrated in the, in, the, in the network, in the substation network, for many reasons. First of all, for safety reason, for security reason, cyber security reason. So we can get access to the Falcon using a um, normal uh, modem with the SIM card inside. Uh, so thanks to the um, modem with the SIM card, it's possible from any location, from our office, for example, get access to the Falcon and see uh, what is going on in the monitored cable. So this is performed once per week, and once per month, we can provide a report that give you a detailed analysis of the real condition of the terminals and joints of the monitored cable. So these steps is something that come from our experience. This is the best way to approach uh, a new customer or uh, because uh, um, sometimes uh, people need to change their uh, methodology. So in um, not only the traditional method with the traditional test van, but uh, in order, let's say, to trust uh, a monitoring system like this, is required to do some experimentation. So this experimentation never starts with a high number of uh, uh, cable under the monitoring. So it's important to keep uh, the uh, relationship between uh, you and us by uh, giving, first of all, us the uh, access to the file control, the GSM modem, and also the, um, the fact that we provide every month a test report is also giving you uh, the correct information about what is going on. Because even if Falcon is uh, fully automatic, in the beginning, in the beginning, it's important that we discuss together uh, what are the real information that you are getting, and also this uh, is increasing in the customer the trust in this technology. Okay, these are my contact. First of all, you can visit us in our website, you will find the full information about our solutions. And if you are interested to discuss with me regarding more details and why not uh, try to understand if it's possible to start a new pilot project in your network, these are my contacts, my email, my phone number, and my LinkedIn profile.